Welcome to our Configuration Enhancements talk series. This is for Coherence 1212. My name is Brian Oliver. I'll be leading you through the series. And today we're going to talk about uh, part one, uh, the introduction of injectables. So let's briefly look at our agenda for today. The first, first part of the series, we're going to look at uh, the background. What many of the reasons why we changed things and have added uh, a lot of improvements in Coherence 1212 specifically to cache configuration. I'm going to talk a bit about the background why we did this, um, what are the changes and what are the improvements coming up. Uh, also in today we're going to look at just some of the simple improvements that will hopefully make your lives a lot easier and possibly reduce the amount of XML configuration that you need to do. So let's just get started and talk about the objectives. We had many objectives for improving Coherence 1212. Specifically, we wanted to improve some of our, you know, the ability to integrate with third-party frameworks. Particularly, we, we want to uh, improve our integration with containers, certainly WLS, Glassfish, etc. But also, we've noticed we wanted to Im certainly improve how customers work with injection frameworks, those using CDI, Juice, uh, Spring, etc. Um, in the past, Dealing with this with coherence has required a, a little bit more development than we, what we liked, so we wanted to imp certainly improve this area. Along with this, we wanted to permit third-party and open-source development around coherence, specifically, for example, to allow plug-in development on coherence servers. Um, so the configuration refactoring that we've done is to help certainly these four areas. Another area that we wanted to uh, sort of allow um, certainly improve on is the ability for customers to extend coherence. We saw this a lot in the coherence incubator um, but we wanted to build these features directly into coherence to allow new features to be added to coherence um, certainly without us having to you know, engineer, feature, engineer the new features into the coherence product itself and ultimately we wanted to provide a, a sort of complete non XML programmatic configuration of coherence. Historically we actually did this um, but sort of demand meant that we actually wanted to do more in XML and <laughs> trend has changed back the other way so we're re-enabling these features. So what's different? So in Coherence 1212 essentially nothing should have changed. Your configurations from Coherence 371 should work directly in 1212. So for most people to start with nothing will have really changed but underneath the covers really everything has changed. Ultimately what we've been doing is we've refactored Coherence 1212. We've adopted a new internal runtime configuration model. Remember from the previous slide I talked about being able to program it, programmatically configure Coherence? Well this required us to expose our runtime configuration model. Um, so not only have we adopted a new one but we've made this model public. One part of this refactoring has meant we actually changed how we process configuration. And one of these improvements in this area alone is allowing configurations to be customized and extended. And we'll see this in, uh, there's a whole, whole talk on this in a later part in this series. And obviously removing some of the dependencies on XMLs. So again, ultimately existing configurations should work without any change. Um, we actually have the original implementation is shipped with 1212, um, that of which is in Coherence 3.7 and, and previous versions, plus a new and enhanced configuration um, processing model. The new enhanced configuration processing model and approach is actually the default, but it lets you switch back to the old model if you really need to. So let's look at some of the simple improvements. These are the things that you can use straight away without really too much changes. So let's just take, for example, a simple cache store. Let's call this the old style cache store. So in the past, if we wanted to declare a, a cache store, we would do something like this. You know, as part of a read write backing map, say, we would declare a cache store, um, we would declare the class name and so forth. This is fairly standard that you'd see in a normal example with coherence. So we can see we've, we've created a simple class that extends the abstract cache store. Uh, in this case, we're not actually going to be storing anything, we're just printing stuff out to the screen, uh, or system out, and in fact, we're not even going to support loading, so we're just returning null here, and, th and this is a safe thing to do. So this is fine, but one of the challenges occurs is, what if my cache store needs a little bit more information? Say, for example, my cache store is actually writing to, say, a database or some backend system, or maybe loading from a backend system, 
And one of the important pieces of information I'm, you may need is, for example, the cache name. So Coherence provides this ability to um, declare initialization parameters with your cache store. And in this case, we're going to pass in these init params. And some of the init params are, well, one of them is the cache name. And we have this uh, specialized cache name macro parameter that Coherence understands. So when Coherence goes to instantiate this class, um, it will look for a constructor that takes a string. Uh, and then if, if it finds one, then it will um, inject or part instantiate that, that class, passing in the cache name that was used. So let's look at the changes to our cache store. So now I've had to declare, in this case, a public uh, constructor with our string. And we, we store that, that cache name off. And then later on in our store method, we can now output which cache that came from. So this is very simple, but also um, it can make things a little challenging. For example, if your cache store uh, implementation has to inherit from many things, and worse, or worse and more challenging, is if you can't actually pass in everything you need. So this is where the concept of injectables help. So this is very much like what you see in regular Java with uh, inject and uh, CDI, um, but with a slight coherent spin. So you imagine we create a new injectable cache store, so very much like our previous implementation. But in this case, we're going to use the new coherence provided at injectable annotation. And, and what this does is allows coherence to use reflection on this cache store in this case and inject in the appropriate values as it finds them. Now coherence in this case is smart enough uh, to determine that you actually want the cache name here. And we'll talk about that in a, in a minute. So in this case, we now no longer need to override or declare a, uh, a constructor. And hence, when we go to look at our configuration file, we can see that we can remove the init parameters. And this is really quite nice because it means you can have less XML. Very much having less XML we think is a good thing in this case. With less, less XML, there's less chance of you making a mistake. The other interesting thing is that the type information, let's go back a slide, the type information is clearly defined and coherence will respect this and try to find the right values to inject. So where does this apply and, and how does coherence deal with this? Well, coherence will actually use uh, and try to perform injection wherever it can. In fact, whenever coherence is provided with an object, it will actually attempt to look at that object and search for appropriate injectables on set of methods. And based on the context in which that object is being used, so for example in a cache store, uh, it will try to inject the right values um, before the object is used. So for example, in, the, in a class scheme, um, coherence will actually try to inject the cache name, the manager context. These are traditional coherence uh, cache parameters, uh, macro parameters as we call them. But it could also inject other things like the configurable cache factory, the class loader, and as we'll discover in a, in a future part of this series, any other named or type resource from the new resource registry. So of course, you know, the, this leads to the question of well, what can actually be injected and where is this stuff documented? Well, there's a new package in, in coherence in the com tangasol coherence config package. And this defines essentially the runtime configuration model. And the interfaces and classes in here are documented with what will be injected into them when coherence sees them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, coherence is sort of intelligent and uh, in trying to work out what properties to inject where. And it does this by looking at the setter methods. Add injectables at the moment work simply on setter methods. So coherence will use a camel cache conversion to convert the name of a set of method into a suitable property that it will try and locate and inject. Uh, in the cases where the method name can't match the actual property, it's possible to override this behavior by specifying the, the explicit name of the property. At, well, at the moment, this may not seem to be uh, required. Later on in, an, in a future series, you'll see that this is quite a powerful feature, especially when you're using resource registries. So again, where does this apply? Well, anywhere in coherence where you use class scheme. In, traditionally in XML, we'd, we'd say class scheme, or the instance uh, XML notation. These 
uh, instances that are pr that originate from these schemes, um, these sort of builders, if you like, uh, a coherence will try to inspect at runtime and inject things into this. Um, there are a few places in Coherence 1212 where injectables don't apply, and uh, the main one is actually in partition listeners. This is actually a fairly uh, rarely used feature, uh, but in the future we'll actually be rectifying this, so injectables can be used everywhere. So in summary, in this part of the series we, we introduce the concept of uh, injectables, the annotation that are used for set of methods in, that are introduced in Coherence 1212. It provides type safe injection of values based on the context in which um, the objects are being used and it will help you reduce the amount of XML configuration that you need to certainly need to document. In the next part of the series we're going to discuss using objects from other frameworks in particular native integration with some of these frameworks that we talked about on our first slides. This will help tremendously in certainly in avoiding the use of statics which ultimately improves the testability of both your applications and coherence.